Okay, so let's go over to the statements page. So under manage, um, there's a statements option here in the left column. And um, let's start with a new statement. So let's see, 2021, uh, sorry, let's see, 2021 um, year end. Okay, so we're gonna start with January 2021, January 1st, and then we'll end on uh, December 2021, December 31st. Okay, so we'll save that. So now that we um, create a new statement, what's going to happen is that you'll see you'll be st uh, jumped into the first page of the configure page here. So this is going to give you a chance to edit the formatting of like your return address and things like that, and also see a preview at the bottom. One uh, one great tool as you're kind of starting this process though is we have what we call a deliverability report, which is in this top section. So this will allow you to see um, how many people in your database that are gonna be included on this statement are missing email addresses, missing mail addresses, or have no contact information at all. So if there is anyone there, you'll have them all listed here on the side. So you can quickly edit them um, by clicking on this edit button and it will open at some point. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit slow here. Let me refresh that page to make sure that it works, works correctly. Okay, so I'll move on to the next step here. So you'll be able to edit that just by clicking there and you'll be able to update their contact information, including their email address, their mailing address, phone number, all of that will pop up in that window. So um, the next step down is gonna be configuring your return address. So Centerville Church is the uh, test account we're in here. So we can update that address here, update the formatting um, of what that looks like with a placeholder for the uh, address that it's going to. You can also choose, um, for US customers at least, you can choose which uh, type of formatting the statement itself will be. So you can have, we're gonna use the most common, which is donations in a grand total, which you'll see um, in this, uh, this uh, preview at the bottom. And then if you do have a pledge campaign, which we just showed we did have set up, you can include the pledge updates um, for that time period as well. So that'll be included on the donor's statement. So let's take a little look at the preview here. So right away, the, the way this is looking is we've got Ashley and um, Tyrone listed as the um, uh, recipients of this statement and then our return address. And then the 2021 year end statement will include all of the um, donation history and pledge progress for that donor as well. So yeah, so that's step number one. Before we move on, let me take a quick drink here and then we'll jump into email statements. Okay, great. So email statements will be the next step. So um, you'll see here, you'll see all the donors that it's going to. And I wanted to show you just to uh, point out a, an example here of how you might wanna set up the uh, donor name, especially with joint donors. Instead of using donor full name, which will have Ashley Johnson and Tyrone Johnson, one way you can avoid that is by adjusting this placeholder to be um, first name. And then we'll do, um, donor dot last name. Great. So that way, um, if I update it that way, I'm gonna show you a preview real quick by clicking the preview. And now it'll show dear Ashley and Tyrone Johnson instead of having their both of their last names listed there, which is a great way to just kind of make that feel a little bit more um, personal rather than uh, you know like a, a bulk statement that we're sending out. So it makes it feel a little bit more personal there. Okay, great, so that's what emailed statements look like. And so when you finish that process of um, updating your cover letter, which is like, which is actually gonna be the body of the email, you can um, send that out by hitting this send button. It'll send out to those 48 donors. And what's happening now is that the donors will all get an email that'll have a link at the bottom that they can click to access their statement and download it. So. That way um, you don't have to print it out for all those donors if you don't want to. And it makes it so they can access, access it both through that email or from their donor profile now that we've generated that statement. So we typically suggest as you're walking through the, the uh, 
statement process is that you start with email and kind of wait a few days before you do the print, print statements. And the reason is because as people open them over time, you can make sure that you can, uh, that everybody that should be or wants to be getting those emailed statements are getting them. Here in this email results section, you can check back a few days later. And then once you're ready to generate print statements, you'll have the option to either include or exclude those who have opened their statement already via email. So I just wanted to uh, point that option out here. This For print statements, you can choose to include donors who were emailed a statement either, but either haven't viewed it at all, or you can include everyone even if they haven't, if even if they have viewed it, I'm sorry. So it's a great way to either exclude those people that don't really need a printed statement because they already got their emailed statement, or if you need a record of all statements, you can do that um, by including both email and print statements all in one file. So you'll see there's a couple options here to format the statement the way that you'd like, including things like making um, them double-sided. So if you're printing, you can add some blank pages so you can just have your printer do all of the statements with double-sided and it's a great, great way to save some paper. Um, you can also do page breaks so that after the cover letter, you'll have a break and then the statement will be on its own page. You also have some options for addresses and logo display. So by default, we uh, set up the address to fit in a number 10 windowed envelope. So that way you don't have to print labels. You can just put them in that window envelope after folding and it'll um, get have the address included there. And then you can also choose to include or exclude your uh, logo on your, um, on your cover letter as well. I wanted to point out one thing too, as we're working with uh, cover letters, is we have this cover letter variables option. I showed you an example of this with the full name or donor first name, last name. If you ever wanna access those, you can even, you can click this and copy and paste. Each of them has a description there of what type of format that you'd want. Um, so again, I use donor first name and donor last name to make it so those joint donors display the way that we saw before. So definitely a great tool when you're working with those statements. So yeah, um, here you're able to update and edit your um, uh, cover letter for your statement. And then when you're ready to go, you'll just hit generate. Those statements will be generated. And what's happening now is that there is, our system is gonna to put together a zip file that you'll be able to download those as PDFs. So that PDF will include like a combined statement of everyone with mailing addresses, without mailing addresses, and then also individual statements if you need to reference, reference one at a time. Maybe an individual loses one and they need another one. You can print those either as a group or one by one. So yeah, I'm gonna refresh to show that that download is ready. So all I'd have to do is click the download zip and that file will be downloaded with all those PDFs right there. So I do wanna highlight just really quick before we move away from statements is that this is what the US donor statements look like. Um, those who are from Canada that are watching might be like, hey, there's some information missing here, but actually the formatting of Canadian statements, being that it's a little bit more specific is what's needed on those, for on those uh, forms. We've, uh, we also have those formatted for Canadian statements as well, um, or as you call them, tax receipts rather than statements. So it has all the information that's needed there about the organization and also the donor and a summary of what their donations, uh, what their uh, total of donations are on that form. It also includes things like your um, treasurer's signature and receipt number and all of that. Okay, so that is a quick overview of our statements tool.